to take. Okay, just a minute. Oh, look, it automatically starts spinning as soon as you put the needle on. Okay, listen up. It automatically comes off. Oh my gosh! That should be the intro to my show. And you're probably wondering why it is. Because today's show is going to be very important. It's almost like it's a public service announcement because um, it's going to save lives. I'm a lifesaver. Not taker, saver. Just remember that. Oh, now who am I? Hi, I'm ML with ML's Words of Wisdom from Wisconsin. So you're wondering why, what was that? ML, what was that intro? I mean, pow, whoo, whoo. Well, I found my old original what does it say here? The original soundtrack recording of The Wizard of Oz. Look at that. Look. Oh my gosh. My mom bought this for me because way back when, we're talking 45, 50 years ago, I was so into The Wizard of Oz, The Witch the dog, I mean, you have it, you're all right there, and the tornado. And back then, The Wizard of Oz was on only one time a year. We didn't, whoops, we didn't have, you know, like um, Netflix and stuff like that. It was like, it was during spring, it was like March time frame, the, the Channel 7 out of Chicago, WLS, would have The Wizard of Oz. And it would be like on a Friday night. And we'd all get together, my brothers, my mom and dad, we'd all be in one room. And we'd, we'd make popcorn in the big um, paper mache bowl that we used to make paper mache. It was this big bowl, plastic thing. And we'd watch The Wizard of Oz. And it, when they went from black and white to color, we'd all go, oh. And then we'd all debate why that happened. And someone in the crowd, my mom or somebody, would say it was because they ran out of money. So they had to only use the color, which costs more, the color film for the, the Emerald City. And, the, and when they go to see the wizard, they didn't want to waste the money in Kansas. Sounded good to me back then, but now I guess it's like, you know, the, the Freud dream thing now or whatever. Now we know. But anyway, back then, that was a good enough excuse to explain away all that confusion. Anyway, so why am I talking about The Wizard of Oz? Because today I talked with a friend of mine this morning. I didn't know what my show was going to be about. And this friend called me up with chit-chat, chit-chat, and she says, ML, did you hear about those tornadoes in Alabama? And I said, oh, gosh, yes, it's just terrible. Those people had no warning. They didn't know what to do. And my friend said, ML, have you ever been in a tornado? And I had to stop and think. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, we... We, we had tornadic experiences that I'll tell you about. And we had some storms that would come in. And Lake Michigan, we lived right across the street from a park, and then it was the lake. And the Lake Michigan act, acted like a, a vacuum. It would just suck all the storms right over our house into the lake. 
So we did see some whoppers come through out of the Northwest, but uh, I, I really can't say that I've been through a horrible experience like that. But I have done some research. I went on the computer and I found some information that I'd like to shoot out to you about what to do if you are in a tornado or you have tornadic activity. That's what they call it. Okay, so, what, so what's the whole, why tornadoes, ML? Why tornadoes? What, what was going on with this Wizard of Oz thing? Well, so we watched the Wizard of Oz on that Friday in March. And when they showed that tornado going through Kansas, going back and forth and back and forth, and the, the dust flying up, and it was all in black and white, and, and Dorothy's got the dog, and she's like feebly pounding on the storm cellar, and I am, I am, Dorothy, you know, they're calling all this kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, I was just like all spun up myself. I was all in a frenzy because I just loved the drama of that. It was so exciting, so scary. Oh, oh my gosh. So I convinced my parents that I wanted the Wizard of Oz record. We call them records back then. Nowadays you call them vinyl. I was playing it on my daughter's record player. She calls it like a, you know, vinyl, auto, whatever. I don't know. They have all these new terms for it now, but it was a, a record. And so I had a little record player when I was four years old. And I would try to convince my mom. My bedtime was 7.45 p.m. in the summer. And it's still light out. I'm like, my God. In Wisconsin in June, in the summer, the sun doesn't set until like 9.15 p.m. So, you know, I'm lying in bed. I've got a lot to do. You know, it's still light out. I can still do a lot. So I convinced my parents to let me listen to my Wizard of Oz album. Just side one, not side two. I hardly ever listen to side two. It's, it's, it's practically in pristine, you know, no scratch. And I would reenact the whole thing. Auntie M, Auntie M, you know what Miss Gulch did, said about Toto? She said she was going to, oh, now, Dorothy, we're trying to count. You know, all that kind of stuff. The chickens, all this kind of stuff. And then the tornado comes, and they start playing the sound of the tornado. And by this time, I'm standing in bed. I've stripped all the sheets off the bed. I'm swirling them around, knocking my Peanuts poster off the wall. I'm, like, all worked up. I'm, I'm like jumping around on the bed and my mom is like knocking on the door. Knock it off, turn it down. And I'd say, just side one, just side one. 15 minutes, I would never get to sleep. I'd be up till like one, all worked up. So does that make me knowledgeable about tornadoes? I think so, I think so. From a very early age, I was fascinated by their power. So, uh, you may say, like, well, what, what kind of things, storms did you have growing up in Kenosha? And I'll tell you what. We had, like I mentioned before, we had a lot of storms that would go over our house and get sucked into Lake Michigan. And I always wanted to be a meteorologist, a weather person, so I could understand why. My dad would say the lake acts like a vacuum. I didn't know what that meant. I still don't know. I don't know if it's true, you know, or not. You know, they fooled me with that black and white into color thing with the cost of the Wizard of Oz movie. So, you know, who are you going to believe, you know? So... Uh, the, the meteorologists, of all the people, I think, at a TV station, the weather people are the funnest. They, they are like the, the, the people who go out to meet with the kids. You know, they go to, they judge coloring contests. And, you know, like um, pie eating contest, the weather person from the local station goes to cover it. You know, like, a, like um, a baby giraffe is born at a zoo. 
you know. And so they'll go and co cover it, and the kids are naming it, you know. I want to name it Tommy, you know, that kind of thing. It's kind of fun. And so they get these fun little gigs. You can't send the sports person because they're not into that. And the anchors, they, they have to stay at their desk because the, you know, breaking news comes in. They got to be ready. And so like the roaming reporters, they're too busy out there covering like local news. And, and I learned this because normally we watch cable news. So, you know, I'm, I'm like looking at the, the nation and the world and, you know, I hardly know what's going on in my own hometown here or my own down the street, you know. Uh, and so one time I had a friend who lives out in the county and she sent me a text. And she said, ML, she has a friend who's, friend's daughter was kidnapped. I mean, big story, big story. Kidnapped out in the county. She said, turn on the evening news tonight to watch the coverage. Okay, so I six o'clock. That's, I think, when it comes on. Get my daughter. We're going to watch this show. And, oh, look, look. Okay, this is a little commercial. Speaking of shows. I put this pin on because it reminds me of a swirling vortex of a tornado. Because I, it was what this show was going to be about, what to do in a tornado. But anyway, before we get there, we got to talk about this news thing. So the, the news. So we're watching this local news and it's like, ah, uh, car runs through T intersection stop sign and goes into house. Stay tuned, more after this. And we're like, oh my gosh. How did that car get going so fast and then it just slams into somebody's front living room? How does that happen? When the issue comes back, they talk a little bit more about that. I'm waiting to see about the kidnapping. And then there's like another, I don't know, baby giraffe is born, the weather person's there, who knows? And then they come back and it's like another car goes through a stop sign at a T intersection and lands in the swimming pool of a house. More after this. Stay tuned. You know, don't change that channel. You know, I'm like, and it was, and my daughter says to me, mom, is this what local news is now? All these cars flying into people's homes? I mean, what's up with that? I said, I don't know. So we just went on the computer and looked up this kidnapping and just read it online. You know, why go through all of that drama? So anyway, so we had that going on. So the weather people, you know, I used to watch the weather when the weather would come on back then. Because, you know, it, it wasn't that good. They couldn't forecast that well, that far out, you know. Um, back then it would be like, oh, we think there's going to be some rain in the next two weeks. You know, I mean, I could say that, you know, so these storms would come through and they would just go right over our house, right over Lake Michigan. And you'd see the fingers of lightning coming down, you know, into the lake because it was like suck all this energy into the lake. I don't know. I don't know if the fish were getting zapped or what was going on. And my dad and I, as soon as the storm would start coming, the, the leaves on the cottonwoods would start flipping over and making that sound because you knew the, the wind was coming from the northwest, from Minnesota. And it would like bring bad news, bad news if that was happening in the summer. So we'd get our little folding aluminum chairs and we'd go and we'd sit on the front porch. And my dad would take a, a musk melon. We called them muskmelons back then. Nowadays, I think they're called cantaloupes or something. But we called them muskmelon. And this is the best. I'm telling you. This is what you do. You cut it in half. Um, half ways. Like down the, like the equator of it. So that you get like the little thing in the middle. You scoop out all the seeds. And then you go in the freezer. And you get your vanilla ice cream special. And you put the vanilla ice cream in the little hole where the seeds were. 
in the muskmelon. You get a spoon and you go and you sit out on the front porch to watch the storm. That was amazing. Oh, so much fun. And, and the best part was that you didn't dirty a bowl because you, you scooped the ice cream with the melon in the melon. So it was kind of like its own bowl. Genius. We were just genius back then. Nowadays, the closest thing to that, I think, is like a taco salad where they take a tortilla, tortilla, and they, and you, they um, cook it up a little bit, bake it so it's hard, and then they put the salad in there and the meat and the cheese and whatever, and then you eat the whole thing and you can eat that as well. Or, I don't know, I've never tried this, but maybe you can take it home let it air out a little bit and use it for cereal and milk the next day. And then you never have to do your dishes. I mean, this is just genius, whoever thought of this. My friend Robert in Houston, he kind of like was talking about it. And I think that's just genius. But anyway, so we'd sit on the front porch and watch these storms come in go right over the house. And they would just go right into the lake, the lightning. And... One time, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I, I didn't know if I was, should be scared or what. What do you do if a storm really seems like it's not just going over the lake, like it's going to really seriously cause some damage? So I remember back in Kenosha on Saturdays at 12, it was either 12 noon or 1 p.m. on Saturdays, or it was 11 a.m. It was one of those three times, I'm pretty sure, the sirens would go off, and it would be every week on, on the hour, on, you know, and you knew it wasn't a real tornado because it was on that hour. It was like 10.59, 11. And it would stay like that for like, 30 seconds. And we'd all be like, you know, playing with the Barbies or coloring or whatever. And, you know, you just hear it and you go, oh, I'm glad the sirens are still working. But I don't know if, there, if it was a real tornado that came through exactly at that time. I think everybody would be in trouble because we'd all be thinking, oh, it's just the testing for the tornado. But what, what would happen is we were all ta taught and told that if you hear the siren and there's a tornado coming, you go in the basement. That's your place of refuge. You go in the basement. Like in The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy's trying to get into the storm cellar. Same thing. So one night, my room kind of faced the lake, the front of the house. And the sirens didn't go off. But I kind of woke up because I kind of heard some crackling noise. And then I saw some flames. And I looked out my window. And there was a burning car on our front yard. Now, there were back then in the 70s, there were a lot of kids kind of like confused, didn't know what was going on, smoking pot, crossed the street in the park. I was not one of them. I was always practicing my clarinet. But these kids, I guess somebody called the cops on them or something, and I think they thought we did, but we didn't. And so as like a warning, They stole someone's car, I don't know, put it on our front yard and lit it on fire. So I just go into my parents' bedroom and I'm like, mom, dad, there's a car on fire on our front yard. And my dad says, go back to bed. Like he's going to believe me with my crazy imagination and you know, all of that. I said, no, I'm serious. 
So he gets up and he looks, he's like, oh my gosh. And so then he goes over to the phone. And back then we didn't have 911. You had to dial a seven digit phone number on the landline, the, the rotary dial on, that was mounted on the wall. And it was something like 652, I don't know, like 9734 or something. It wasn't an easy number to remember. And so, you know, he's dialing, oh my God, in case of fire call, you know. So, you know, then the sirens, the fire. all this. I'm like, oh my God, it's the siren. So I grab my little dog, happy hooligan, poodle, and I run to the basement because I'm trained. Bam, I go right down. And my mom says, what are you doing? I'm like, it may explode. And I run down to the basement with the dog. Oh, that was just exciting. That was like the closest I came to like having to go to the basement at that house. But I have been in other situations where uh, I was at a band camp once in Ripon, Wisconsin. And I don't know, this, we were all in different dormitories. It was like a college and we were, it was band camp. It was band camp during the summer. You know, you're marching around and playing the clarinet or the saxophone and they're teaching you to march and parades and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, the halftime show, you're moving around. So we were doing all of that. And we were all in different dorms. It was like a college. And we came back from dinner and the sky had this lightning and it was like poof, real big green lightning. And we were all kind of like, hey, this is going to be a bad storm. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited, you know. And then the, all of a sudden, at like 10 o'clock, the sirens go off. And we're all like, oh, man, what do we do? And back then, nobody tells you about safety. Nobody tells you if there's a basement. Nobody tells you not to touch a rattlesnake. Nobody tells you anything. Nobody tells you where the emergency exits are, if there are any. Nobody tells you how to tie a ladder, make a ladder out of tying bed sheets together. Nobody tells you that. So you're on your own. So we're all like, what do we do? What do we do? And then somebody, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe me, maybe, decides that we're safer if we all run to the dorm next door. So I'm like, hey, everybody, let's go to dorm B. And I run right out the door and everybody, like a bunch of lemmings, follows me because I played clarinet. So they're all running. We're all running. And the lightning flashes right around us. And our hair goes like, Phew. I just washed my hair. That's why it's all flat right now. But if I didn't wash it, it would be like, you know. And we're all running to the dorm next door. And this green lightning, it was like neon green lightning, flashes and lights us all up like skeletons. And we're all running to the dorm next door. We get to the dorm and we're knocking on the door. Let us in, Auntie M, Auntie M. And somebody opens the door and we all run in, like 20 of us, like idiots. And they're like, what are you doing here? And we're like, we, you know, we need protection. And so they had us all sit down in the hallway and put our hands over our neck. And then pretty soon someone br breaks out a pack of cards and we're playing hearts or whatever she ped. And then it was over. That was exciting. But that's one of the things they tell you not to do. Okay, now this is where I'm going to start giving you, sh uh, shooting out some information to you about what not to do. Number one. Don't sit upstairs and look out a window. Don't sit on the front porch in a folding aluminum chair and eat a cantaloupe with some ice cream in it. Don't run outside 
and run around in lightning or run around between buildings or under tall trees. That's what you don't do. What you're supposed to do is go to the basement, okay? Because that's, you, you can't be, you got to, this wind is just going to sweep on over, over everything. The wind. It's just, it's like you're standing here and the wind's going to come and knock you down. So you got to get below ground. And they say to have like candles down there. Or I don't know, maybe not candles because if you have a gas leak, you'll just go kaboom. So no candles strike that from the record. Flashlights. They have these lanterns now. They play this cool music. It's like this lantern that you can freeze in ice for like 10,000 years. You can put it in the oven and it'll tra it's track light or something. It'll still work. It's like this um, army thing. You can get that. Uh, we have some water in the basement. You know. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So that's what you need to do is have an, an escape route and have everybody know what you're going to do if the sirens go off or even if, you know, oh my gosh, we better get in the basement. There's no sirens, but this doesn't feel good. So do that. Or if you don't have a basement. Now I've lived in some places that didn't have basements because the water table was too high. So if they dug into the ground to build a basement for a house, I guess it would fill with water. You'd have like an indoor swimming pool and you can't have that. So they don't have basements. So what they say for that is go to an inside room, like a closet or a bathroom without any glass windows. Because they, this makes sense. They said you want to have as many walls between you and the outside as possible without any glass to break and shards and get it in your eye and all of that, like the click clacks and all of that. So they say to do that. Now, they also say that if you're driving in a car, that staying in your car and trying to outdrive it or outrun it is, if you can do that, I mean, get the hell out of H-E double hockey sticks. Oh, oh, I almost said a bad word. Get the H-E double hockey sticks out of Dodge. And just, if you see something way out there, don't be like, oh, let's go see what it is. That's what I would be doing. So do opposite of ML. If you ever do that, if you ever see that, just think opposite ML and go the other way to safety. Um, and so you outrun it in the car if you can. If you can't, if you're like driving along, you're singing to the, you know, the songs on the radio, John Denver, you know, and you're singing, you know, country road, and you're like into a zone. And then all of a sudden you look up and there's a tornado. What they say then is if you immediately look out the windows and look for a ditch. Now, some roads have a little ditch on either side. And that's like a drainage ditch. Get, leave the car, get your purse, take the keys or whatever, you know, leave the car, take some candy, whatever, go and run to the ditch. Get in the ditch and get as low as possible because then if it's like a ditch, the wind, you're like you'll be lying like right in here, like that's you. The wind will go over you like this. And don't, Poke your head up to see what's going on because you'll get hit, you know. So just stay low and wait for the whole thing to pass. Lord Almighty. Now, pass. They used to tell us, you know, there's like a whole bunch of information that used to be good back then that's now not so good. Like doing the Heimlich, if you're choking, now they're saying just slap on the back because Heimlich, you could like damage organs and all, kill yourself or whatever. So now they used to say, if you're driving, park your car under an overpass. We used to call them viaducts. And wait it out there. But now they're saying that the wind just is like a wind tunnel. And it, it, it amplifies through the viaduct or the overpass. And it's worse than, than you being like out in the middle of the road. So don't do that. 
So, you know, and it used to be, we would be driving and if there was like a, a, a storm and we're driving through Illinois or Wisconsin going to the uh, Eagle River or whatever, and if there's a bad storm coming, it used to be, we would be like, oh, there's an overpass in case we need to go there. If the storm gets bad, there's one, you know, and so you drive through, you slow down. Do we need to stop? No, we're okay. And then you keep going to the next one. It's like when you play musical chairs and there's no chair on the corn, on the ends. There's like a row of four chairs and then a row of four chairs and there's nine people. So it's four and four is eight chairs, nine people. And as you're going around the corner to get from one side to the other, you got to go fast because if the music stops there, you're the person who's going to be out. So that's how it used to be with these viaducts during a storm. You know, you'd be like, ooh, and then, oh, now I got to go around the corner real fast and hope that the music doesn't stop or the tornado strikes until I get to the next viaduct. I mean, it was very, very stressful, very stressful. And now it's the opposite. So now if you, you're driving on a highway and you got these viaducts, and the storm is coming through, now you're like, oh, let me just drive real slowly and look for a ditch. Uh oh, here comes a viaduct. I got to go fast underneath it because if the tornado strikes while I'm under the viaduct, I'm going to be doomed, you know? So it's just very stressful. So, you know, you just got to calm down, listen to your John Denver, and then like know your surroundings, you know? That's just how, that's another thing that you need to, to know. And if you're in a, uh, an RV or a mobile home, don't stay there. Oh, Lord have mercy. These winds will just pick those little things up and toss them around like a saltine cracker. It's just so sad. And that's where a lot of these people lose their lives. And so, speaking of that, you know, I'm, I've been giving you a lot of good information, a lot to digest, a lot to absorb, soak in, think about, think always about safety. But let's take a moment to think about those people who have lost their lives. Okay. We'll see them again sometime. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I want everyone to know that I think I have found out what was causing my itchy, scratchy eye. You know, remember I said to people, help me be strong. I think it's these pumpkin seeds. I still have them in my stash. Say these like bleached out chemical things. I thought it was that. Well, and I asked, you know, I, I, I said, if you want to send me an email to say, be, stay strong, send it. I got a couple of emails. I tried to stay strong. I broke down. I ate some. And I didn't have the itchy, scratchy eye. So it was good that that happened. Then I ate some chili flavored pistachios that expired about four months ago. And I thought, you know, there's so much food nowadays that it expires. And, you know, like if it's dairy or meat or something that needs to be refrigerated and it expires, throw it away. I mean, I hate to throw food away. I, I hardly ever do because I'm really on top of managing these expiry dates. But if it's like chips, Nuts, pistachios, um, cereal and mixes and stuff like that. You know, I'll, I'll use it for like four to six months after it expires. You know, it just depends how much chemical is in it and that kind of thing. And so anyway, I was eating these pistachios that expired back in November last year. And I ate some. And then like about two hours later, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm all itchy. So I I threw those out. I was almost finished with them, but I threw them out. So I'm I'm doing a lot better now. I'm not as itchy scratchy. So thank you for your concerns about that. So um I think that's about it for today as far as this 
program because I think I've given you so much information. I don't want to overload you in the information department. And um, just remember, keep your head on. Always know where there's a ditch. Go to the basement and put vanilla ice cream in a cantaloupe that you cut in half. Okay, well, that is so much information. I, I think that's about all I can handle. So, with that, I will say bye-bye now. This has been ML's Words of Wisdom from Wisconsin. So, thank you for listening. Bye-bye now.